from the beautiful Treasure Coast of Florida. You're watching Am Radio Concepts. Hey everyone, this is Eric with Ham Radio Concepts on YouTube, and I actually did it. I pulled the trigger on the Yaesu FT2DR. You might have seen my video on the one I just got, the FT1D, but I was so impressed with the Fusion Audio quality on the local repeater, uh, and it's such a new mode, I have to just jump up here. So, am I going to sell my FT1D? I'm not sure, but um, right now we're going to just take a brief overview. I'm not going to do much of an unboxing, but it comes with the basic stuff, the radio, the battery, the manual, the warranty card, the charger, the antenna, and the belt clip, as well as the programming cable. One thing I like about these is they come with the programming cable here and then you can just download the software free on YouTube, on uh, yesu.com you don't have to go purchase an additional fifty dollars for an rt systems uh, uh, software suite with the cable for this okay and i purchased this at the same place i got the ft1d it's gigaparts.com the link is in the description when i had first considered this this was on back order that's why i went for the ft1d but i, I really did want this uh, when it came out, why go for the one first, then the two? But I got uh, antsy, I got the one, now I got the two, and maybe I'll keep both, maybe I'll sell one, I don't know. So uh, let's get right into the, the radio here, and I'll show you. The first, when you look at this right here, the first main thing you'll notice is that it's got a much larger screen, and it's touch screen. This is a, uh, a touch screen display, and you lose all the menu buttons here on the front with the DTMF keypad and the shortcuts for getting into the menu. Uh, to me, it's a plus to have this. The touchscreen uh, can be confusing for some. If you don't have a smartphone and you're not used to touchscreens, it's going to be a little bit of a learning curve for you. But everybody in this world, minus the five people I met last month that don't have a smartphone, can probably handle the touchscreen on this. Um, for comparison with my FT1D, uh, the size about a little bit bigger, okay, a little bit taller. Um, you'll Again, you'll see it's got a, twice the size of the screen. Um, less the buttons on the front here. Uh, on the the size, as far as width, it's about the same thickness. All right, a little bit taller though. So in your hand, it does feel a little bit bigger, uh, bigger than my ID51 as well. Uh, in comparison to something like a Bofeng UV5R uh, right here, a $38 handheld, it's about roughly you know similar in size. So this thing isn't gigantic like an IE, IC V80 Sport or something like that. So uh, one major improvement I like, uh, besides the touch screen, is that you remember in the video I showed you on the FT1D, uh, the, the knob on the, on the top acted like a selection knob, and then if you wanted to use it for volume, you would hold the volume on the side, and then you would have to turn the volume this way. So if you weren't thinking and you heard a contact, you quick wanted to get to them before they left, and you had it down low, first thing you did was jump on this and change the frequency. Now you gotta go back, find it, and then hold the button and turn the volume up. Not, not real big of a, a problem, but in the version two here, the FT2D, they made a separate selection knob on top and the volume knob right underneath it. So now you can flip through and jump right on the volume. You don't have to worry about the button on the side. All right, uh, now the button on the side is a squelch. So by holding squelch, you can adjust the squelch and then letting go, you just have your regular volume. So we'll kind of give you a brief overview, and as I said before, the Fusion is still new in this area, so uh, a buddy of mine is getting his radio, and uh, I might let him borrow my FT1D, and we can do some on-air tests. So this is going to be like a part one of two, so I'll show you about this real quick. We'll go through it, and then part two, if you subscribe and stay tuned, uh, we'll do some testing. Uh, audio analog versus digital as well as with this I purchased the uh, USB camera mic speaker mic for this which will work with both the radios and allowing you on fusion to take a picture with the camera mic storing it to the SD card a micro SD card and then sending it to another person with a fusion radio uh, you can retrieve it on your computer later with the SD card or if you have an FTM 400 it'll display right on the front of the screen so um, I'll show you that because I, I figured I didn't have the speaker mic so I couldn't even use that with the FT1D so we'll do that in part two so that way I can then I'm going to compare Yesu Fusion with the ICOM D-Star um, so let me turn this on real quick we'll just kind of give you an idea and again uh, when you first fire this up um, it's going to ask you to put in your call sign and your name or whatever. You're going to have to do that first. So, uh, and once you do that, uh, it'll bring you to your main thing now. Uh, a couple features on this. Uh, standard features such as VHF, UHF, dual mode, dual band, dual receive. 
Um, so you can do VHF, VHF, UHF, UHF, or a combination of both. Now full receive from uh, uh, 160 meters all the way through uh, 900 megahertz. Okay, a wideband receive with AM broadcast and FM radio also. Analog and digital. So you have everything you can cover in this radio. And my uh, one of my great features I like about this is that they included APRS on the FT2D as well. Some people say APRS is not that popular. Others beg to differ. I like having APRS in here. I can run APRS on the bottom, and I can run uh, the uh, repeater I'm talking on on the top. And uh, this does have GPS built into it. And um, so let me uh, go here. For instance, um, to get into the menu right here, the function button will take you into some of the menu features, okay? And uh, you can adjust your transmit power. You can... Uh, uh, set a dual receive on on one band uh, your band scope you have a band scope on here and I showed you in the uh, FT1D video that they have a band scope on that and this is real time so as you're going through you can see the little bars moving if there's an action or activity as you're scrolling through a frequency you'll see uh, there's a, basically the noise level, but you'll see uh, spikes in the band scope, so you can kind of find stations in here, or repeaters, or even radio stations uh, when you're mon excuse me, when you're monitoring. Um, so we'll stop the band scope. We'll go back in, and uh, let's see, get it out. Of Come on, a little bit of a delay with the. Uh, there we go. Okay, so. Um, Direct entry keypad, you, you might say, well, do I really have to go through, uh, like, my ID51? It's kind of hard to direct entry. You know, I like to bounce around from frequencies. Sometimes I don't have them all programmed in. All you'd have to do is tap the top here. And now you can type in 1, 4, 6, 6, 4, oh. Now, remember, this type of screen is, I, I want to say, a capacitive LCD. So it's not like your iPhone. It's not real fast one two three okay you're gonna have to it's it's got to have the, the the feeling of your finger I guess they call it capacitive uh, resistance or however they put that still works good nonetheless uh, so we go back into the menu here you know you, you can set your uh, your squelch right here your, your tone squelch for repeaters um, you know there's there's different menu setups uh, when you want to go back a menu you just hit back and go back into the uh, the menu here. There's there's a bunch of things here. Like I like this feature here with the station list for APRS. Uh, you can just go right to it, and it'll show you the uh, different stations. Um, how many does it hold here? It holds 60 stations. 60 recent stations. I think my VX8GR I had in the past only held uh, 25 or maybe 50. I'm not sure. Uh, messaging right through here uh, for APRS. So you can go right in here and enter your text here. Edit text. There's your keyboard. Very cool um, to have a touchscreen keyboard on here. You can enter messages directly, enter call sign, and then send a message to an APRS user. But the biggest thing is fusion. That's what we want to talk about. So we'll go back here. You'll see I'm in FM. Now you can push the, uh, let's see, it'd be the mode button here. And that'll switch it from the different modes. Now you have an FM mode, you have a digital mode, then you have an auto select mode, or uh, a mode that uses data and voice for sending pictures and such. Um, so basically, on an automatic mode, um, if you're talking to someone through a repeater, the repeater, the Fusion repeater, has a hybrid system so that if someone comes on analog through the repeater and you're uh, on an auto select, it'll automatically switch you to analog, and you can talk to them via analog through the repeater, which I have to say, I've heard a couple people in my area say, the analog quality of that Yesu uh, 1DX, I think it's uh, uh, DR1 uh, repeater is is really good compared to a regular analog, uh, you know, the, the old traditional analog style 2 meter FM repeaters. The quality is phenomenal, even on analog. Digital is superb. So, uh, if or you can have it set up at the repeater to where you can talk in on analog and output to digital. So I can stay on digital and it'll convert through the repeater and talk to somebody on analog. Uh, so it's a hybrid system. You're not locked to having a fusion radio and an analog radio together to talk on two separate repeaters. Um, for something like my D-Star radio, 
if Bob down the road doesn't have a D-Star radio, I can't talk to him on D-Star, period. I can't even talk to him on that frequency, period. Whereas the Fusion Hybrid will give you the combination and the flexibility to uh, be able to talk with various people that, that are not on digital or when you're on digital uh, or vice versa. So on digital, you're using 12.5 kilohertz of bandwidth. So you're, you're half the bandwidth of a traditional analog signal. And uh, that, that that's what gives the, the tighter sound on digital. Some people say it sounds maybe a little bit pinched or robotic. It's because you're using the 12.5 kilohertz for voice, and then you're using 12.5 kilohertz for data so that you transmit with your GPS built in. When you're on Fusion, you can transmit your automatically your position to another person or see their position. So as I'm talking to somebody, uh, on Fusion, I can see exactly how far they are from me, just like I can on D-Star. So uh, it's using half for data and half for voice, or you can use it all for data to send a large file such as a picture, or you can use uh, picture and talk while the picture is sending, which uses half and half. So very cool. Um, so like I said, back in here in the menu, um, you know, there's a, a bunch of features that you are familiar with in here. Um, let's see if we can go back here. And we'll go into, let's see, how did I get to it? Okay, well, that would be where your GPS is. Now, you would see uh, your GPS location uh, if the GI haven't turned GP on, a GPS on yet. But uh, just by pushing a display, you can see where your location is and as you're talking to somebody where they're at, okay? Uh, if you want to just switch down to the bottom, no problem. There you go, okay? Uh, you can direct entry in this frequency too. So we'll do one, four, four, three, nine, zero, okay? And then, uh, so that would be APRS FM and then I can set this to digital. Um, so I like the touchscreen feature, that's one of my favorite. Uh, you can go from memory to VFO mode, okay? Set your uh, your tone and your uh, repeater offset and you're good to go. The easiest way to do this is through the programming software on the uh, YouTube website, you wanna download that. Group monitor, the GM, the group monitor is a very cool feature on the, on the ASU and I've explained it on the FT1D. The group monitor, if you have five or six people on the ASU Fusion, uh, it'll let you know who on Fusion in the group that you have is in range for communication. So that's uh, sort of like when Yesu uh, was uh, about five, ten years ago, I had a few radios that had ARTS. ARTS was automatic range transponder system. It let me know if someone was in simplex communication range and uh, when we were out of range to talk. Well, the group monitor kind of keeps an eye on, hey, you have three out of these five people in this group that are in Fusion range. and uh, that's pretty cool, I have to say. Um, you know exactly how far people are from you. The Wires X, this is for the linking, the internet linking of the, uh, which is not fully developed yet or not fully implemented, but the Wires X is what enables Fusion to talk globally through gateways connected to the internet, much like D-Star. So I have Wires X on my FT1D as well, and uh, radios such like the FTM400 have the uh, Wires X function. It's gonna be implemented real soon. They, they haven't uh, got all the repeaters up with it yet. The, uh, by the time, maybe by the time you watch this video six months from this date, uh, Wires X will be all up and uh, you'll be talking worldwide. So it is fully Wires X compatible, okay? Um, so, you know, kind of a brief overview of what it looks like, what it does. Again, your volume independent. What I like about that is your volume on the top is independent from your volume on the bottom. So if you want to keep APRS muted all the way down or you have a frequency that you're monitoring but is constantly busy, you can turn that down and keep the one that you're really interested in, keep that all the way up for a contact. All right, so very cool. I like the implementation of this new battery uh, battery meter up here, if you could see that. Let's see. Okay, the battery here has got, let me see, one, two, it's got about eight bars in there. One problem with the FT1D was that uh, the battery is much like every other radio I have, three bars in there. Okay, you have three bars battery, and it kind of just abruptly dies. Well, you really don't know where. Uh, it's kind of like Wi-Fi signals on the iPhone. You have one, two, and three bars. It doesn't tell you five, six, seven bars, okay? With this many little segments, I can tell when my battery is halfway dead or uh, 
uh, you know, it, it's fully charged because sometimes you leave the house and the free bar graph shows you fully charged, but you make two transmissions on it later on after it's been on standby for a couple hours and it's dead and you weren't aware of that and you don't have your charger. So uh, a very cool uh, feature there. The clock up here in the top based on GPS time. So um, that's an overview of the FT2D and more excitingly, we'll get into the next video of uh, showing you what the audio quality is. Um, from analog versus digital so uh, you know I hope that um, you subscribe and and uh, keep an eye on this and it will compare this to FT 1DR with audio quality and then we'll compare it to D star so uh, thanks for watching and 73 from KJ4 Wise AI digital, digital.